Welcome. Hello and welcome to the Oslo Podcast, episode 81. My name is Carol Colossus. I am host of the show and we're going to be talking this week about OPL Week 7 and the semifinals. Uh, looking forward to the final tomorrow night. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about patch 5 point something. We haven't quite figured out what it is. Probably 5.6. Uh, and to help me with that, we've got Victor. Hello. I mean, hello, everybody. <laughs> And we've got the man who gives up his social life to be here on the podcast. Not that Vic or I have a social life. And that's Stephen Gaston. <laughs> Good to be back. Steve literally rushed home from dinner with friends, which probably means he's not getting laid tonight. Um, anyway. I'm not, not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we are part of the Trinity Force Network. So you should check out uh, our website or the network's website, which is trinityforcepodcast.com. Uh, you can go there and get any one of our shows or our sister shows, which include the T-Force proper, uh, which releases twice a week, and they focus on sort of high level, higher level play and you know more advanced skills. We've got the T-Force LCS rundown, which talks about the, obviously, the LCS. And we've got the, the brand new Forwards podcast, uh, which is dealing with more, more sort of uh, basic concepts of League. And, and I've been enjoying listening to that because it's... Always good to be a reminder of like the more straightforward stuff as well, because it's so easy to forget that. So make sure you check What's, them out. It's been that long since you've practiced last hitting that it's probably <laughs> going to be really yeah, good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, my scrub Sport level pains. mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, what I was going to say next? We have yep. a team speak. We have a team speak. The, T, the Trinity Force Network team speak, which is ts.trinityforcepodcast.com. That's the uh, the server. So you can go in there. Jump. There is actually an Oslo room. I need to actually bookmark it in my team speak. Um, so I, 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 it's pretty cool. <laughs> I actually, I actually used to think that to get the server um, address, we had to go to the website ts.trinityforce. Oh yes, that would be a problem. Yes, that's the. And I could never find it, so I could never get on this team speak until one day I. Put actually it, figured it actually, out yeah and I'm like oh wow there are people in here yeah so when you connect to t when you t uh log you know turn team speak on you go to connect and you put ts.trinityforcepodcast.com into the server address spot um and that's where Ripper you will find it and then bookmark it because i always forget to bookmark it um yeah you can still use razor there's lots of people <laughs> racing um that's we you can also go to the Trinity Force Network subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash tforce network, um, where we post uh, all the different shows, post uh, discussion, you know, discussion reddits, threads, and uh, there's always lot of people talking about stuff there. So you, you check that out. We also remind you, um, if you w didn't listen to last week's show, which was really from two weeks ago, um, we are having a iTunes comments uh giveaway or you know rp giveaway basically uh we i haven't actually checked today um but we were at 17 uh reviews not comments reviews itunes reviews uh if we get to 30 by the end of this month we will do a 10 10 dollar rp giveaway if we get more than 30 uh maybe we'll give away more rp but yeah if we get to 30 we'll give away rp because we want to double the amount of reviews that our friends on the trinity force podcast have on the australian itunes store and i just want to point out that i didn't actually know about this until i listened to the podcast it shows you how much attention steve pays to what i say at the start of the show <laughs> actually no you were there it was me and yeah, because yeah, you I were was, sick. I was away sick. Yeah, you were I sick. Had, That's yeah, right. so I waited for the audio version of the podcast yeah. to come out. And then I listened to it. I'm like, wait, we're doing what now? Yeah, we're doing it. I just decided, man. Executive this decision. This didn't come up once in a meeting. No. Nah, I was just like, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm the boss. I get to decide that. Um, I haven't told Adam yet either, but he'll be right. We've never <laughs> bugged him for anything. Gets all our hard work and this is... Yeah, anyway. Just, just say, hey, Adam, we need 10 bucks in RP. And he'll say, yeah. oh, okay. Because <laughs> actually, Australian believe time. it or not, believe it or not, the hierarchy goes Carrot Colossus, T-Force Network. Yeah, that's it. They do my because bidding. They think I the, do their bidding. It's actually yeah, the it's, other way around. Yes. And the reason for that is because Australian accents. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Hey, uh, Adam in the T-Force channel says you've got it. Pwned. Cool. There you go. Confirmed. $10 of RP could be going to you if you leave a review in the iTunes store. And make sure you email the show, which is oslopodcast at gmoc.com. 
uh, to if you if your username your you know league username isn't the same as your uh, iTunes username, just because we would make sure that we get it to the right people. So we'll be drawing that end of the month, um, and yeah, so you gotta be into it. And if you actually leave a review for something like Stitcher or some other sort of uh, podcasting service, let us know, and um, you know just send us a screenshot and an email. We'll sort it out. Um, yeah. We're not we're not exclusive like that. We, we're we're Open access equal to equal opportunity. That's it. Equal opportunity. That's it. I was going to say easy for everybody, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but that's another show. That's another show. Um, <laughs> and just want to let you know that we have got a uh, a T Force Patreon uh, account coming soon. So if you're looking to contribute uh, to the ongoing network as well as get exclusive content, make sure you uh, you check that out when we will let you know when it's out. All right. Well, with that, let's talk about the really important stuff, which is OPL, this uh, last two weeks. Now, actually, before we get started, just want to make mention the reason we didn't have a show last week was because we record. We have been recording on a Wednesday because it was the only day we could do it that was an OPL. And then they decide to put the OPL on the Wednesday. And then Thursday was OPL, and then Friday was Good Friday. So that's why there was no show last week. So let's, let's talk OPL, because OPL is good. So week seven, results. Um, in case you missed it. Uh, those uh, six games, uh, the I guess there's not like en- enough people that kind of weeds it out. But uh, Chiefs seven games, seven games in week seven, or six. Oh, sorry, we're going back. Yeah, yeah going back. Ignore me, ignore me. Keep going, going back. You do your thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing my sorry. thing. Anyway, the big the big winners being Legacy. They won two games. Uh, Die Wolves went one and one. Uh, Immunity went one and one. Chiefs went one and zero. They only played one. Uh, Sudden Fear actually beat Avant Guard, which was a big deal. Um, yes. And Four Not went zero and two. But that's back to regular fashion. Back boys. to regular fashion. <laughs> um, not really a whole lot to. Say. Well, I mean, I guess we we can. It's not. Yeah, there's not really much to say because we, we get into the semis because that's where all the interesting stuff happened. But it was just well, very cool to see Sudden Fear beat Avant. Made a deal Avant. out of Week Seven and how yep. important the matches were. Yeah. Because they really were important for the yep. stand. Absolutely. And. Uh, and they really were like the yep. going well, one and one, and yeah, the, just the the results really did come right down to the wire. It was really close. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and particularly that when Sun Fear beat Avant Garde, like that totally opened the door for you guys. I mean, that essentially, gar- I think that well, it was the same. Did that guarantee you a place when when Immunity beat Direwolves. Everyone was like, whoa, whoa, yeah. Let's go I, I, I remember it became because it was kind of it. Was, by them losing, it became much more favorable for you guys. Oh, no, no, that's right. Like, it just meant that you guys were still tied and that you'd have a playoff if you didn't win. And then you beat Die Wolves in, I got to say, really impressive fashion. Like, I remember yeah. thinking at the end of that game, like, particularly um, Uber Bro, who I've been, to be fair, quite critical of this season. I thought he really stepped up in that game. Like, he really, like, it wasn't a case of Die Wolves being kind of a bit lame. Immunity really stepped up in a big way. And I was like, yes, this is what I want to see. Uh, and I'm sure Ranconius was, uh, was pretty, pretty excited as well. So, oh, yeah. um, but the main, well, since then we've had the semis, so we might as well talk about that because they're the results that are currently sitting there. So, uh, uh, legacy played direwolves and immunity played chiefs, uh, and the winners direwolves beat legacy three, one and chiefs beat immunity three, zero. So maybe we'll talk about chiefs and immunity, since we've got the manager of immunity or the coach yeah. of immunity uh, with this um, analyst. analyst that's it sorry that was the, that was the one I was looking for I'm like it's not manager it's not yeah anyway yeah. Yeah, analyst, same analyst. shit anyway analyst yes I am um, the poobah not the grand poobah the well poobah. that's what were your overall feelings uh, well I to not harp on the team or anything like that but I kind of expected it three three owed by chiefs um like it's my job to look at look at the facts, look at the situations that teams are going to be going into, and make predictions and give advice based on that sort of thing, mm. and just based on how the advice that I was giving was being received or or not received, as the case may have been, it was just like okay, we've got other things that are going to hold us back against Chiefs, and Chiefs are just like they dropped one game during the season. Like, how, how can you go? All right, yeah, I think we'll go three and two and beat them like there's, there's no real way to look at that 
for, while being honest with yourself and going, yeah, okay, I, I think we can we can take this. There was always the chance because there's always that. Mm, oh, yeah. we could do it. We've beaten them previously. We've beaten them in scrims. We, come on, you know, that's and that's all really good. But if I was going to be putting money down, no, nah, I would have gone with the Chiefs, and uh, they they proved why. Like they just oh, they they turned they up to play in a out big every way. Game it was like yeah. yeah. Well, game two and three, they they beat you guys in like twenty four minutes or twenty five minutes. Like it was. To be fair, they won game two and three in game one with just the psychological. Advantage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the yeah. first game was interesting because basically for the first, I think it was about seventeen minutes. There kind of nothing actually happened. There was no first blood. Mm-hmm. There was no towers. Uh, sorry, sorry, nine minutes in. You know, so the first ten minutes and immunity's early game is reasonable. I mean, Spooks makes a lot of plays. Like he's very aggressive, um, and and Swiffer and. And uh, Swiper are both, you know, they're, they're more than capable of getting solo kills in their lanes. But it was still pretty quiet. And then, you know, sort of 17 minutes when they really started to apply the heat. So, and it, I think I think it was about a 35-minute game. Um, well, I think uh, T-Gun said this ages ago. And I think it really did apply to these games in particular. I haven't even talked to the team about this, but this was basically my feelings on it. Is that uh, T-Gun said is... Uh, you can play the game to win or you can play the game to not lose. Yeah. And I really felt that Immunity played the game to not lose yep. as opposed to play the game to win. And Chiefs and, came to play to win. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they a, did that. Yeah. They very much did that. Yeah, I mean, just their movement across the map in that first game. Like, once they got rolling, it was just, you know, and, and the second and third game, it was, like, devastating. Like, they're just the way they... They showed why they are the team to be feared. And that's, mm. you know, like we've, well, there's, there's been a, a bit of a few wobbles over the last year. And, you know, after this game, you'd say they are absolutely the clear favorites to win just because they just, like, they've really, really got their game together. Yeah. Um, Against a team like that, it's like, oh my God, how do you not walk into that and think, Jesus Christ, I hope we don't get absolutely slaughtered right yeah, now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the almost fourteen and O team rip yep. four not game. Yeah, so close. Yeah. Uh, uh, the asterisks on that one perfect season, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, obviously I mean, they're they're the favourites to to win the finals that are on uh, tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow night. Yes, tomorrow. I'm like, my God, what yeah. day is it? Um, <laughs> it's not on right now, is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah. So they're the favourites to win tomorrow. Um, and I really did think the good transition onto Direwolves versus Legacy. I did think Direwolves were looking stronger towards the end of the season. Legacy have played more, a lot more consistent than they did say in previous years. But Direwolves have played a lot more aggressively, and they they look stronger towards the end. Um, I mean, we took a game off them in the last week, so you know, obviously that isn't going to hold up to too much scrutiny. That statement is a blanket statement, but in general. Um, I, I was thinking Diables were looking stronger going into that matchup, and they did. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they seem like they're more hungry. Like, I mean, it's one of those things. Like, hungry. <laughs> you know, last year they sort of came in qu- kind of towards the end of the season, had a pretty good showing in the regional finals. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always hard to tell if they're going to be, you know, sort of a a one hit wonder. You know, if they're just going to sort of fizzle yeah. out. And well, I think the I've way they've it- played this this split, they've like they're. They're probably they seem more hungry. I mean, Legacy have played pretty well, but yeah. Direwolves are just they seem more more keen to prove themselves. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know if that's actually well, the case. Maybe Legacy have just I after Direwolves uh, qualified for top four last season and they made it through the to the semis. Since like after that, uh, a few of the guys from Immunity took holidays. I know J.K. Smithy went to. New York for a while, and you know, a, a couple of players started to play World of Warcraft and stuff like that. Direwolves did not. Direwolves kept up their training regimen the entire mm. time. It was amazing dedication from uh, a team that everyone was like, "Oh yeah, they're up and comers," but now making the top four, making the top two. Yeah, they're in the final. Like they're in the yeah, final. Yeah, yeah. Like their their hard work and dedication has really paid off, and this mm. entire season is testament to that. Gee, Steve says a lot about you, Mister. I don't want to think about esports for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm terrible. <laughs> for a few well, weeks. I mean, I, I it think was also for five days. Come on. <laughs> um, I think also a big factor in in Direwolves' wins uh, overall was perfection. Like he 
really just completely dominated in, in game one and three. So game one, at 30 minutes, he was 4-0-1 on Hecarim, and then he finished up 8-1-9. That's and then game three on Fizz, he was 10-2-10. <laughs> like, they just could not, on AD Fizz, like, they just just couldn't do anything about him. He just absolutely kicked ass. And mm-hmm. and he was, I mean, he carried them. Like, I mean, I think if it wasn't, it wasn't for him, I think Legacy would have been much more likely to win. But it was just, he was... It was just in the zone, you know, and he was just really, really punishing them. And then in the final game, they had, um, uh, Darwell's had, I think, they had Ezreal, Corky, and Jana, and it was just, they couldn't lock them down. Like, every time Legacy went in to engage, they just couldn't. And then, and the double Trinity Force, you know, just getting those Sheen procs on those towers, just, yeah, it was it was even, but, you know, they had and the they lead ex- because they, they just executed, had so much mobility. Yeah, they executed their compositions extremely yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, they weren't like one trick ponies, like, okay, we're going to run nothing but, you know, as Corky tonight. You know, every single comp was different, and every single comp they played very well. So, mm. nah, bravo. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and I mean, like, game three, uh, Ejim played Alistair and showed why he's one of the best supports. <laughs> yeah. And by far the most feared Alistair. Like, he was, oh, I love that guy so much. Like, just everything he does with, with those sorts of champions is just so impressive. Um, no matter how Spewed legacy plays, so. yeah. spewed into my Alistair play. Yeah, spewed it right into my Alistair play, and now I'm <laughs> carrying through the silvers. Yeah, um, oh, that was. I don't know. That was a really good game, though. That Alistair game. Um, mm-hmm. Like after watching that Alistair game and both legacy games, I really thought legacy were going to actually beat Direwolves. So um, yeah, I mean, no, it was was close. Even though I mean, Direwolves ended up winning. It was close for most yeah. all, all the games. I think the last game it was a bit. Pro- oh no, actually no. I think it was which one of the games? I, I wrote notes. Yeah. I think their first game, Diables were probably quite a lot stronger. But yeah, two, three, four. Very. Cl- I mean, obviously, like, they won game two, but games three and four, it was still close all game. Like the, it gets to the thirty minute mark, and there's still kind of two thousand, three thousand difference, and then they just Diables managed to get that final thing that allows them to break their base or get Baron, and then it's kind of over. So yeah. Um, because Legacy's last games of the split before in the semis, they were um oh they made both their they made both their opponents surrender and four not surrender at twenty when four not are finally starting to look good they yeah. made four not look like four not on their first week <laughs> of, of the um of the um split. Yep. And, so um, I'm yeah. I'm disappointed to not see them go through, but um, mm. here the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, go Chiefs. The Chiefs um, go through. I mean, I I think. I was, I was the other thing I was going to bring up is Minky Whale. Like, so Minky Whale got kicked off Legacy. No, was he? Who was he on? I think he was on Legacy. Yeah. He was on Legacy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because um, they brought in Tallywhacker at top, who then moved to bottom and Cardrip to top. So, yeah, I mean, ta- like, it's good to see Minky Whale because I mean, he's a real personality as well. Like, he's actually kind of a fixture of the scene. You yeah, know, kind of like a. I mean, obviously not the same personality, but like an odd one or a or a cutie pie who's like got kind of his own little fan base within within the community and uh he seems like a good black guy so it's good to see him come back and actually play well because for a while there you know he's still playing trundle and getting smashed and you know it just wasn't wasn't good at all so it's good to see players be able to sort of come back into it and uh, mm. uh and it's really funny because trundle is uh actually gonna start to show up a bit more yeah with the, yeah with the viability of tanks across all roles being mm. i think he's a like big, people- i think he's a big shivana player as well isn't he mm. yeah so it's a good time. Good and Heim. Heimerdinger player. The old, the old Mickey Wild Heimerdinger. The old um, he was supposed to 1v1 my Tarek with Heimerdinger. And that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> Probably better for you than, you know, than he does it. Because being embarrassed oh, by a challenger oh, player. That, it's pretty embarrassing. Matchup, no, not in that matchup either. I'd lose to the lowest bronze against a Heimerdinger <laughs> as Tarek. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my strategy when we played in that MoPro... Uh, against the challenges is just stay as far away as humanly possible and hope you don't get targeted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it didn't die. So they, you know, it's I Steve, Steve after the games was like, you expect me to hit pros with skill shots. <laughs> Corky friends. Corky. I'm telling you. Um, just all right. Well, your waves, so shoot towers, yeah, that's it. Run away. Just sit back in safety, farm the wave, get, yeah. get the, get the sheen pro and wait for the other guys to come along. So they back off the tower. And you Those can just- are some serious, bronze support level strats right there hey man Pick i didn't corky. die and i won the game so i'm like i don't give a crap what it Pick uh, corky kill minions shoot yep. towers and run away yep there you go boys Absolutely. and girls that's it that, that's your just so if you get to challenge people you can send me the check you know 
Carrot Cross is at Oslo Podcast. Um, all right, let's talk about the final. So this week, uh, tomorrow night, Diables versus Chiefs. Who do you think is going to win? Is there any chance in hell that Diables win? That's the, probably the best question yes, to ask. There is. You okay? Because if you ask me, like, if you ask me the same question last year's finals, is there any way Legacy can beat Chiefs? I would have said no. Yeah. But they, uh, you know, oh, sorry, avant garde. Um, well, same with Legacy. I think they both did. But um, uh, the wild, the wild card before, where just because the games of League of Legends can swing wildly with just you know one morgue binding or you know mistimed thing, I think Chiefs are definitely looking flawless. Like they're looking about as good as they ever have. Uh, but your comments earlier about Die Wolves being hungrier than than any other team, they 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 could very well take take games off chiefs and even win uh again it's unlikely that the they'll go the they'll go three and oh against chiefs uh, but i think with the with the current patch it really does favor dire wolves in a sense because chiefs have always had a very regimented uh compositional structure where dire wolves have always kind of had these outlier champions like uh back when they had rippy they would always be running udir and sort of stuff in the jungle so and this this meta is way more open than it ever has so you know it's not impossible for dire wolves to uh to take a few games or even win but you you've got to go with you got to go with chiefs like that's that's where the the odds are like but i've been wrong previously mm. Mm. See, I think uh, Dire Wolves are definitely on a roll. Like I think, um, I think if they were ever to beat Chiefs, it would be in the finals. Because um, like in the splits, they weren't looking as good as they are now. I mm. think I think if they if they come in and they're on a roll, like you know those games you play and you just get in and you're like running around the map and you're doing all these things, and you're like fuck, I'm really good. Mm. That being this, said, this I could, do think Chiefs be bands to be better than uh, the. Yeah. yeah, like they 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 are really good at their their research and their. And they're yeah. drafting and everything like that. So, but I think if like Die Wolves come in a, and they're a on a roll, big champion pool. Yeah, mm. if Die Wolves come in and they're really on a roll, especially after the last games, then I think they can really get in and get a couple games off Chiefs. Maybe even win the whole thing. Um, I think even if they won, though, it'd go to five games. Like mm. Chiefs will not will not go down without a really hard fight. Mm. But um, having said that, money's on the Chiefs. Yeah. And I want to see the Chiefs go through because I really want, um, I really want Oceana to send the best we got over to Turkey. Absolutely, that's. Mm. I was actually, I was going to bring that up after we were done with this discussion. Is I really want Chiefs to be the team that represents uh, overseas, like because mm. they've got the experience, they've they've definitely got the consistency, they've got the drafting, they've basically got everything. Their their warding, their pressure, their tower priorities, their like they they've got the whole package and if dire wolves beat the chiefs that while while dire wolves are very good chiefs are on a ne- like the, they're on the next level if anyone's going to be able to take take games off international teams and go through any kind of tournaments it's going to be the chiefs see i think chiefs are going to win 3-0 i think yeah. they are hungry i think last year they were suitably humbled by you know by legacy and by Avant, you know, like probably in both finals, they were thinking, yes, we're going to win and their complacency let them down. And I think that's what happened with four not as well. So I think, you know, if you looked at how they played, they clearly thought, oh, we got this in the bag. We don't need to worry about it. And four not really, you know, decided to like turned it on and, and they just were caught off guard. Um, I don't think, I think they'll be really well prepared going into this match. Um, and I just think, you know, and, and these games against immunity, they looked unstoppable. Like it just looks mm-hmm. like, you know, there's no one who's even going to come close to them. And I, I just can't imagine. I, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I just I yeah. agree. Th- three and zero is the most likely result, but yeah. it's not impossible for them. To no, no, of them. course not. No, and yeah, it, exactly. You know, and they could choke, like because you know the the pressure is there. They want to prove themselves, and they yeah. don't want to be you know because for so long they were the team, you know, and and last year they were shown no, they're actually quite mortal um so you that know maybe they might try- said i like i want to defend like all the games that they lost were lost on a single team fight followed immediately by tower tower inhibitor tower tower nexus 
yeah, every single game sure. they lost yeah. was that exact swing. So, yes. Yeah. So it's it, not like it, it, there was a moment in the game where they slowly lost control no. to the other team. It was like, whoops, one mistake, and they are pushing it for everything they yeah. can. No, so I and, can, and that's that's probably the only confidence. way you can beat them. Yeah. Because yeah. if if you, you know if you get get a successful push and then you wait fifteen minutes to get around to pushing the next you know if you get an inhibitor and then you they don't they force you to wait fifteen minutes to get go for the next one you're not going to get the next one because they're gonna that next is going to respawn and they're going to come back at you so exactly um you know they they need to you basically need to knock him it's a bit like a boxer you need to knock him on his back feet and then keep punching him while he's still on his back feet until he's knocked over if you let him so that's re- your, recover that's your advice dire wolves punch chief yeah that's it go up to radio <laughs> yeah. yeah uh see <laughs> what I was have, Victor gonna say i have confidence in dire wolves that they can take at least one game i think i think they'll take one um the main reason because i think that i'm gonna get my analytical pants on here uh, 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 uh. now i i i I actually think that Dire Wolves are the best team in the region at playing from behind. And Chiefs are a very good team at getting ahead and holding a lead. But I think Dire, I think Dire Wolves would be the best at sort of holding it out to that really late game point where a, broke, where a messed up team fight for Chiefs will get those towers all the way down to the Nexus. I think if any team would in the region that would be able to do that, for not, uh, not for not, fuck me, uh, Dire Wolves... <laughs> Four not to do it. They're going to work. Four are going to work. <laughs> no, I think Skywolves de- would definitely be able to do it. Particularly watch um, Immunity versus Direwolves and Four not versus Direwolves. Both of those games, um, Direwolves at some point were playing very much from behind, and um, and they stalled it, stalled it, stalled it. Slowly made a lead, made stronger picks, capitalized on mistakes, and pulled forward at some point. Immunity game, immunity still managed to come through, but the four not game they uh, they pushed it over just because they had that late game advantage uh, by that point. So I think against the Chiefs, it's I find I think it's very very possible that that will happen against the Chiefs. They'll stall it out and they'll make that team fight happen, and um, they'll probably win one game. And then I know, and then you know what, the next game Chiefs will go. We're not going to let that happen again. And then Chiefs will win the next ones. All right. I well, let's, any- let's, let's let's put some final predictions on the line since uh, you know we can. So I'm going three Chiefs three zero. I think Dawes will win one. Okay. So Vic, uh, Chiefs three one. Steve. Uh, well, my prediction is still that Chiefs will three zero. Okay. Um, but. But they, Victor they, puts they, up a good could. argument. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just there's so, like it, the the games are close. Yeah. Like, like we all agree, Chiefs are like a level above everyone. But the fact that they dropped a game to four not, uh, really shows that they do have their vulnerabilities. And some mm. days they might not perform to their level. But the chances of that are just low. They're very very low chances. Yeah. They're one in fourteen. That's your odds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we have patch. Well, first, actually, let's quickly talk about Earth mode because it's probably going to be gone by the time we get around to recording the next show. So let's let's quickly talk Earth, and then we'll try and get into some patch notes, um, and we'll pretty much be here for eternity because we'll probably finish five point seven, and then five point eight will be here. Those bastards. Um, <laughs> we could just do a TLDR. Yeah. version of it and go over the last three changes yeah yeah these All right. changes were made to Skana <laughs> over the last three <laughs> he has gotten yeah. one more point of damage one more point of damage. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> alright F mode 2015 how have you guys gone have you found it it made me so angry I started playing ranked again and I had a lot of fun <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how about yourself Karen how'd you go no it's been great I've been, uh, so I played my favourite Ergot in Earth, and he's mm-hmm. amazing. And going ham and going three like three v one, always fun. Never get sick of it. So uh, my main thing is I, I had to stop dying because I could never charge my mirror mano because I just kept dying, but getting like three kills in the process. So um, yeah, That's worth. That's well, yeah, worth. totally worth. But it's just disappointing when you can't get that two yeah. percent max mana damage on like everybody consistently, and then you just destroy anybody one v one. So um, yeah, that was that was an interesting struggle. Um, 18 miles or higher is completely like just 
absolute bull. Like he's just yeah. They they discovered so that so gross. Last Earth mode, didn't they? Yeah, just Base- push the, yeah. Like because he doesn't, you don't build attack speed. You don't build. You know, you build merc treads with home guard. Build you build a blood like you build memory. bloodthirster. You mm. build uh, uh, mercurial scimitar. Then you build infinity edge, and then you build what's the, there's another. Uh, then you build what you call it. Um, uh, the the uh, the blue one um, essence, essence reaver. Route? So you yeah. just build those items, and then you know if you run out, if you if by some chance you haven't destroyed every single tower by fifteen minutes. Then you might build something else, but it's just you just build pure ID. Hilarious fun. I just um, want to point out that on the last Earth mode discussion we had, we were talking about uh, your Urgot and how how much fun you were having on Urgot, and Urgot. it came up in discussion that oh, I can't wait till that guy gets reworked so that we could see him in competitive play and you know yep. so we could play games with him, but. He hasn't. I can't. I can't think of any time in the last year where he's been touched. Um, well, he got the he, he got the mana shield, the the the, the scaling of his mana to yeah. his his W, and that makes a yeah. huge difference. Yeah, but the funnily enough, the biggest change that affected him was a change in jungle itemization in a new jungle where tanks became amazing, and now you can run a tank AD like full tank comp. And that made him viable in professional play yeah. again. So, second time Earth Mode's around, but he's viable. That's yeah. yeah. I Actually, think that's brilliant. Miss Fish just pointed out in the chat that his Q returns mana if you last hit with him as well. So that's another thing. I mean, when, in Earth Mode, when you've got uh, essentially unlimited mana, because I mean, really, Earth's actually not too bad. It's just he's so heavily gated by mana. Um, you know, he's it really, really restricts his ability to, to kind of be like a terror. I mean, if he, if he, if you didn't have that sort of sort of um, gating on him. He'd just be an absolute terror in mm. in, in the early game. Like well, he'd just bully the he, hell out. And that's, that's why they... Of his range compared to what the other AD carries used to be. Yeah. Like, you know, when uh, people like Caitlyn and Trist- like, but Tristana before the range nerf yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Like, it was just too easy to counterpick him. Yeah. Um, and also, he's not very mobile, so you yeah. could go a highly mobile person against him, dodge his little lock-on abilities, and just but in jack a, him up. But, in a solo but way, that's, he, he's just a, yeah. he's a terror. Like, I mean, that's yeah. I, I've never played him as a, as, as a marksman. I've only really played him as a, as a solo laner, and he bullies like nothing else. And it's because, but because he's got such of a mana problem, you mm. know, that's what restricts it. But yeah, when you take that out, and then you put mana scaling on his shield, like essentially, you have a on every three seconds, you have like a really nice big shield and mm-hmm. so you just you just never taken it like i think i recall tower diving a, a malphite under his inhibitor turret and just and killing him. and, and walking out mistake. with almost full health and i'm like thanks for the shield it's like <laughs> wow it's just nuts so anyway if but i want to i want to i want to ask you a question real quick steve just so all of our listeners know who called Urgot's return for the uh, season? You five? did. You did. I... You made like five <laughs> champion predictions. I think all of them have come true except for one. Heimerdinger was the only one, and Anivia. Yeah, and I made more than five. Heimer and Anivia and Skarner are the only ones that haven't come back yet. Everything else was right. I, I said no. Nah, I said I don't think Skarner's Ogmore. far off, man. I don't think Skarner's far off. Yeah. Well, one day. All right. Um, I played gonna be... Flank in Earth mode because the Shakos were giving me the shits, and I just oh, shot yeah. all their, and I just shot all of their things and made three thousand Q farm. Yeah. AD <laughs> Mouse is pretty good for dealing with Shaco because you just like as soon as these things, like obviously clearing them the initial boxes is a pain, but once you once you've cleared them out with your with your um your griblies, you just as soon as you spores one, you just send your minions to attack them and it's gone. You know. <laughs> like Shaco so, so in Earth, it's not the answer is always Carthus. The answer is always eighty miles of hearts. Oh, I, <laughs> dude, you have not seen Carthus in Earth mode. <laughs> yeah, Carthus in Earth mode is pretty good, but Mal's is like he kind of ramps up surprisingly hard. Like essentially, as soon as you get that Bloodthirster and maybe another BF sword, like you pretty much can duel anybody, and it gets kind of gross. Like it, it's it's it gets so he gets like. Because he's, he's, he suppresses on such a low cooldown. It's on like a 15 second cooldown. So it's like every time they come up to you, you've got about seven or eight gribblies. You, you drop, drop all your abilities and then you ult them and their health just goes... Like their health is going in very slowly and then it, then their minions catch up to it and it's just like chunk, 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 dead. Like it's just... They just disappear. And then you get to a tower and it's... Oh, 
Yeah. So. Did you call them griblies? Yeah, griblies. I can't remember they're called voidlings. That's the name of them. Voidlings. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, was, I think the top the top three win rates in Earth when somebody did the analysis of like a hundred thousand games, Sona was like had like a sixty nine percent win rate. Galio was second with like sixty seven, and then Malzahar was about the same third. Mm. Yeah, Galio, I think his shield just you just can't kill him because his shield continuously heals him. Um, yeah, and because he's playing against so many APs, he just stacks mass MR. Yeah. Because AP is so favoured. Yeah, you know, I saw so many Luden's Echoes. I saw a Luden, Luden's Echo full AP build, Caitlyn. And she I've, just kept I, netting. I've, and she just kept I was talking netting. to somebody and they said they did that. Yeah. And, and you know, snapshots net- like She was just netting backwards and it was the most annoying shit because you couldn't catch her. And she was dealing all this damage with her fucking Of course, net. And the Luden's Echo would get re- uh, boosted by the fact that she's moving by use of the net. Okay, yeah. that's clever. Nice thinking community. Let's, I like it. Yeah, let's, let's move. But anyway, speaking of Luton's Echo, it's yeah. Getting Actually, no, just, final thing: Earth, the Earth mode song, and the video that goes with it is by far the most amazing bit of music Wright's ever done. I never <laughs> thought they could bring bring a dose of Saints Row into League of Legends, but when you see that opening on the on the client, it's like Saints Row three. It's like amazing. Anyway, <laughs> it's pretty great. I love it. I love it when Earth when Earth goes. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized that I can now... He's a gangster. I'm going to wear a toga and wield a golden spatula and cosplay as Earth because he's got the same body shape as me. So, (laughs) it's my dream. My dream. And I'll I'll just shave my head, like, proper, and then I'll just, like, put the grey face paint on and then I'll be Earth. The guy's guy's my hero. Actually, I ordered the the Earth uh, Earth figurines. So, yeah, it should be coming soon. All right, let's move on. Let's talk five, six. So... What we'll, we'll do with five sixes, we'll talk about the highlights, you know, the major changes because five seven's obviously already out. It will be out tomorrow morning. It's actually being patched, so we'll try and Skipboxes yeah. And... So let, let's start off by talking about Elise um, because she, I'm for the longest time, was ubiquitous in every game. It was Elise and Lee in or Car- you know, Kazix and Elise, and she's slowly been brought back bit by bit, and now she's. Definitely not in that top tier anymore. So they've uh, changed her human form movement to be five movement speed less and increased her spider form based movement speed by 10. Um, her repel, at least, can now right click while in the air to descend on a target in addition to pressing E again. So I'm guessing that means. Oh, it just makes it easier for her to, to, uh, to descend. Yeah. And her cocoon, the missile speed is increased from 1450 to 1600. Steve, as a resident Elise player? I'm super pumped for this. Um, I got, before I'd read the patch notes, I got a message from Scrub Phoenix, uh, who had the day off work, and he goes, oh my god, dude, the Elise nerf rip, or something to that effect. And I'm like, oh my god, what are they doing? Uh, apparently he had misinterpreted, because <laughs> all he saw was the base movement speed reduction on the on the uniform, <laughs> and he stopped reading there. I'm like... Okay, so five speed reduction there. Ten speed reduction in spider form, you say? So I was like, okay, well, that's that's amazing. Just, you know, uh, she's she's meant to be faster as a spider. You know, that makes sense. Uh, so thematically, happy with that. Uh, the repel change, I think, is fantastic because um, I still think they really need to fix the repel because ever since they made those changes on the circle, it's been feeling kind of clunky, but... Uh, you can right click a lot faster than you can spam E just with the way your your hands are positioned on a keyboard and you know on the mouse you can right click a lot faster so the second it's available for you to descend you can do it um, you know microseconds matter in this game quite a lot mm. uh, and the missile speed on cocoon is huge because it was pretty easy to dodge that skill shot once they re- once they reduced the missile width ages ago mm. um, so uh she's probably not going to see any play in the jungle just because tanks are so good and why would you choose a lease when you could just choose choose Italy when you're looking for an ap option but um as an actual elise fan i'm very excited to see these changes and who knows this might be enough to see some kind of top lane or something weird uh elise play but i don't know uh i don't think she'll see competitive play from these changes she may because the meta is just so open at the moment actually no i think you will i think you will see at least in some pro play uh after these changes yeah i think the movement speed buff is big enough 
and the and the cocoon changes are big enough that she'll start showing up. Uh, just for anyone who's uh, who's listening to this, uh, if she's already appeared in games, I took some time off, so I haven't actually watched some games <laughs> since, since I haven't watched any games since Immunity played or during the Immunity prep. So because uh, we were just has not been seen. However, prepared. Shaco has been seen. Can you believe that shit? Shaco got played in competitive. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty nuts. It was also, it was also Europe. Uh, I have nothing to say about Elise except for I hope she doesn't come back. <laughs> I mean, I th- like, she's still in a very fragile... It's one of those things where, you know, any little buffs can really throw off because she had that combination of damage, mobility, and, and uh, you know, hard CC. Um, you know, so it's it's always a, a bit like Kha'Zix was for a long time, you know, very delicate balancing, uh, you know... That was twenty well, percent CDR on Magus would be really awesome for her. Mm. The uh, jungle uh, enchantment mm. for Magus oh, yeah. that's got twenty oh, yeah, CDR. Yeah, yeah. She used to build um, the Juggernaut equivalent, the Spirit of the Ancient Golem, and I think that only had about ten CDR on it. Yeah, but now I mean the thing about the Cinderhawk doesn't have any C- CDR in it anymore, so you'd probably probably look to build Magus because it's also got the um, the spell penetration, which is great for someone with really good base damage which at least yeah. kind of still has like she's got yeah. max health damage, damage and then amazing. execute so yeah it's just a lot harder to get that damage off yeah but with yeah like where the speed changes like the 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 lowering of a movement speed in human and increase in spider is she really needs to set up her ganks in human form much more intelligently because she's not going to be able to close the gap while using all of her cooldowns and she's not going to be able to close the gap nearly as well as before. Like It's only a five movement speed change, but the fact that they've increased her, her spider form means that she'll be able to follow up on any setup that she has done in human form much quicker. Uh, and that's going to be a huge deal because at the moment, when you come down from Repel, you can be easily outrun if you don't have your Q up. Um, like if your cool, Q's on cooldown or you used it at the very start, you can't use it as a gap closer, and, or, and they could just walk away, and your cocoon's going to be on cooldown still for a little while. So I think in skilled hands, or just people who are very practiced on it, they're going to really be able to make uh, make the best of these changes. Soon, TM. Soon, TM. Mm. Uh, Nocturne uh, has had a... <gasps> Another subs- one of my favorites. Yeah, I know. One He's of like my favorites, my two too. most played champions um, ever. <laughs> Uh, with the exception of Carthus, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also got a buff for his auto attack animation. Um, that stuffed me up so much. Can I just say, <laughs> after playing Carthus for like five years now, I like after the buff to his auto attack, I I could not last hit a minion with it. I was just like, huh? oh, I, I I shot too early. What the yeah. hell just happened? <laughs> happened like eight times before I got used to it. They need to fix. Thresh's uh, auto attack is so bad. Anyway, Nocturne. So Nocturne has had the uh, duration of his level... The, sorry, the cooldown of his level 1 ult changed uh, from 180 to 120. And then another sort of 15 second cooldown buff like, reduction on his uh, level 2 ultimate. So um, Nocturne's always kind of been there. Like, you know, as a top tier jungler. He's always sort of been... He's never been at the top. Well, he hasn't for a long while. But he's kind of... Yeah. Always been solid and good, just never been, you know, truly top tier. I always felt like he was right up there, but mm-hmm. people like Vi were just knocking him back down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jarvis yeah, well, as well. Especially, and... especially with Callista so heavily in play, mm-hmm. Nocturne can get to her, but she's going to get away from him. Yep. Yeah. Whereas the, uh, Vi the thing with Nocturne... him up. Oh, so go ahead. I was just going to say, like, Vi's in there and Callista's not going because mm. they're point and click oh, oh, oh. Yeah. cc yeah now uh not nocturne's viability has never really been an issue it's always someone else's viability and those someone else's are twisted fate karthus shen uh anyone with a real global presence mm. uh because he's amazing at following up uh or initiating something that you can follow up with with someone else so uh, Twisted Fate, you know, roaming halfway up the river for a gank on, say, top lane. Nocturne can follow him up, and basically that gank is going to be completely undetected unless there are very specific wards which should have been cleared out. Mm. Uh, and all of a sudden, the screen goes dark, 
your top laner starts crying on Twitch on Teamspeak. <laughs> you got no <laughs> idea what's going on. Bam, someone's dead. Or tw Nocturne's just farming, uh, farming in the jungle, just getting his uh, his jungle stacks up, and all of a sudden, uh, Karthus ult, Nocturne ult, bam, double kill bot lane dragon yep. transition. You know that's really where Nocturne's power has been, and that's always kind of been there. But with Twisted Fate and Karthus and Shen all being sidelined to more uh, Cassidans, LeBlancs, Katarinas, those sort of champions uh, who've really kind of taken over. Nocturne really hasn't shown up. Mm. So, but Karthus is back in pro play. Twisted Fate is back in pro play. Shen's not, but with the changes to Zuzi Rock Portal and stuff like that, I can see a team picking him up for a surprise um, kind of pocket pick uh, style scenario. So Nocturne is right in the like he can be picked up at any time and be considered viable in a particular composition but yeah, no I, one yeah n no pro team out there is going all right first pick nocturne yeah uh you know like that, that's just not something that's done but so, i mean I, I think in solo key like he is quite good um he's oh, got pretty he's got a pretty decent clear like it's not the fastest but it's not the worst it's pretty relatively safe he you know he's because he, of the passive his passive he stays you know reasonably healthy mm -hmm. um Against tanks, he's actually a pretty good counter jungler in the early stages. Like I, I uh, used him against a Nautilus. You know, Nautilus gets to his red buff. You know, starts blue, goes to his red. You know, he's really low. If you walk up there while he's on his red, you'll easily get a kill. You know, especially oh, yeah. if you start on your red. Um, you know, so you got decent damage. You can build him kind of tanky. You can build him with a bit of damage depending on how you go. You know, like he's got a bit of flexibility. And I mean, I think the the, the thing that I think would tip him into the really top levels would be a, a buff to the range of his ult because it really is i mean i uh you know and you probably See, well I, remember I, steve like i i remember when they nerfed his ult and it's, it is substantial how much oh, it range was a huge he lost. Nerf. yeah it and was a i think he, like i think you could probably buff particularly his his level three ult but i think even his level one if you just gave him a little bit more so he could come from sort of because right now you basically have to be in the tri brush to be able to gank yeah get the, the middle of the lane so it's, if you just gave him maybe yeah. another thousand range or something mm -hmm. it'd be amazing no. so it does it does really feel pathetic when you're the one using it but when mm -hmm. you're playing against the nocturne <laughs> um it feels like he's coming from his base from top lane you're in bot lane you're like where the fuck is he coming from he's yeah. traveling miles so i don't know if range is really a big issue um well, but, I, I gotta kind of agree with both of you. Like, if if they buff the range on his paranoia, he'd become instant, you know, five percent win rate in solo queue across billions of players. You know, um, it'd be amazing. But in order to make him competitively viable, I think where the changes need to happen is in one of two places. One, his fear, like his tethered fear. I think if they improved that, then he'd become just you know first rotation or whatever pick. But uh, probably his mana issues. If they fixed mm. his mana issues in any way, like just a, uh, you know, five mana here or a three mana there, enough so that he can aggressively uh, take the jungle and gank while still being on good health and having enough mana for a full combo rotation of abilities, that would be amazing. I think that's, that's what would put Nocturne into the overpowered range. Actually, one thing... Uh... This is what Carrot said that I think is worth highlighting. He mentioned uh, a lot of flexibility in Nocturne's kit. And I think that's really good to point out because um, things that really make champions very strong, uh, two things make a champion really strong is uh, high versatility. Whenever mm -hmm. you see Jace in play, it's because he's really freaking versatile. Mm -hmm. And um, Or like Shen. Shen is, in my opinion, the best split pusher in the game. Because he's the one who can go there forever and ever and ever and join the fight straight away and mm. still have high benefits and not need to worry about his travel time. Yeah. Nocturne, Nocturne's in the Jace camp where he's got a lot of versatility. Strong mm -hmm. ganks, decent clears, um, good counter jungling, good dueling. Mm. Uh, he can build tanky and be a really strong initiator. He can build a yeah. bit more damage and he, can, and he can fight better. He can duel better. And also with the a lot of disruption uh... in fights and just causes absolute chaos i don't know if you if you're playing against nocturne seeing that ult and not being able to fight because i'm a tank player i'm a support player i like the i like the maokais and the, and the alistars 
When he blinds me and I cannot find my carry, I lose my shit because I don't I don't know where to go. I can't find my carry. Where are they? <laughs> I need an adult. I need an adult. No. I, um, what I think is actually going to do even more for Nocturne's viability than any of the changes I just suggested or the change that we're seeing here, the 30-second cooldown, is Jarvan, uh, Jarvan nerfs. Yep. Like, the like because Jarvan has fallen out of favor a lot now that he does have, like, that 22 armor or whatever ridiculous number it was yep. at level 1. Um, whereas Nocturne percent. still... Yeah, Nocturne still has that early pressure. The early pressure's not nearly as good as Jarvan's was, but now that Jarvan's been knocked off his pedestal a little bit, that does mm. open the option for, for Nocturne. Yep. All right, well, let's, let's move on to Sejuani. Um, so she has been one of the top tier junglers for a while. Uh, and so with their... Her... <laughs> for a patch. <laughs> well, yeah, even for a oh, while she's been... Solo Q, fair enough. Solo yeah, Q, fair like, enough. Yeah, 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 for Solo Q. Like, she's been solid, and she's still... I think she still is. But um, so her W, the maximum, uh, maximum, maximum health damage, like the 12% max health damage at level 5 has been reduced to 10%. And that's sort of been pushed like all the way through. Level one still the same at four percent. So, you know, a little bit less damage at the top end. Uh, the probably the biggest change is her R. So if you miss her R, like if you you know the slow was ninety percent, um, but now it's only thirty percent. Uh, but of course that you can trigger your you know her permafrost like her E. You can still trigger off that. So it's worth keeping in mind. But um, yeah, I mean I'm. I'm I think that the change to R is probably a good one. Um, putting a bit, a bit more unreliability into it is, is good. Um, I think her W change is not devastating, but it's, you know, it's well, just... Well, the important the thing change. to point out about the Sejuani change is that now Cinder Hulk exists. Yeah. So previously she was a tanky jungler that could do percentile damage and initiate quite well. Uh, now, once Cinder Hulk uh, was introduced... She could do great initiations. She could build tanky uh, and really benefit from it. But also she was doing a ton of damage, like just with the uh, flail of the Northern Winds doing percentile damage, which it still does, on top of the Cinder Hulk damage. Because the Cinder Hulk damage is quite substantial, especially in prolonged fights. Uh, and no one's better at prolonging a fight than Sejuani slows. Like, she's just... Like, if, if she gets the slow... Or maybe Skarna. I take it back. But, um... Yeah, like, the damage from Cinder Hulk was making Sejuani ridiculous. So, damage nerfs and CC nerfs are just bringing her back into balance. Uh, I feel like it could have sat for a patch longer. Um, I don't know, I, like, if I, <laughs> if I was the patch... Like, territory. Like, if I, if, like, if, like when, if I was the patch guy, I'd be that guy who lets, lets them sit for a little while and be like, Okay, if the community can't work it out, we have to sort it out for them. Um, I'm pretty sure Cinderhawk also got nerfed in this patch as well, did it? Uh, I know 5.7 it gets nerfed. Okay, well, Cinderhawk gets nerfed as well. Mm -hmm. um, so while Sejuani goes down, the thing that was like, all the other tank junglers have gone down a bit as well because of the Cinderhawk patch. So um, uh, I would be surprised if she actually dropped off from this just because, well... Everyone got nerfed, so they should still be around the same level they were. Um, that's really how I feel about that. I, I mean, the, the thing about her uh, is if you hit it, it still stuns. Like, and that's what you, you want should. anyway. So you know, it's, you should be able to hit it. Yeah, you know. Um, and why should you be rewarded? Apart from Carbon, from who played Sejuani in I think Week Seven and just did terribly, um, <laughs> which was unfortunate. But yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. I mean. So I guess in that regard, well, like if, her if optimum use is ult. still as almost as good as it was. Yeah. So, if yeah. you miss a Moomoo's ult, you don't get a slow. Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> like, um, Gl yeah. Glacial Prison's a ranged version of a Moomoo ult yeah. with an additional slow. This is not something to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. like, uh, why the 90% you... slow was justified previously because without that slow, she had really no way of following up on her own initiation uh, if it missed, but, yeah. No, I, I, I still think, yeah, I'm fine with these Sejuani changes. Push them through. Um, somebody actually forgot to mention Rise. So Rise has had a 15 damage uh, increase on his Q. Um, so I think overall it's only like five damage nerf from where it was prior to that big nerf he had a while back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm stoked. I love Rise. Top lane Rise yeah. is fun. I More think base that, damage I think is good. I that's going to bring him back. 
Yeah. Like, I think that damage is enough to bring it back because this is like, well, pre to the next patch that we're not even talking about yet. Um, this is the age of the tank. And yeah. Rise is one of those people that can build a tank and still do a lot of damage. So yeah. he'll be really right at home in this sort of meta. So that that change will be enough for him to to win a lot more trades, a lot more matchups in, in top lane or in mid lane. Uh, because mid a lot of weird stuff being played in mid lane at the moment. So don't you know, don't think that Rise won't be picked up there. Because that's where it was originally played. Yeah. And I think he actually benefits a lot from um the fact that Righteous Glory is an amazing item. I mean, Righteous Glory pretty much gives him the mana. exact same amount of mana as as Frozen Heart, but it's 50 billion times more useful. Um, yeah. It makes and, him run even faster. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, or, he has to... You can build both. Yeah, well, that's it. That's you, you can build both. But, you know, it's... You, you would. Like, Righteous Glory is such an incredibly good item and it helps him in such a huge way because he struggles because of his short range. So now he's going to have more damage because he scales off mana. Uh, and he's going to be able to actually engage better. So yeah, he absolutely is coming back with more often a as well. Like, cause you know, every, like for those of you who don't know, Rise's ultimate increases his movement speed and makes yeah. his spells AOE. So, um, so now he'll have two movement speeds that he can use. Yep. Uh, which is incredible. Yep. 80 yeah. movement speed. So yeah, once that, that kicks into the, uh, oh, scary stuff, it's good. I, I love, I love top rate Rise. Like he's so... Oh, he's so much fun. Um, all right, Singed. Now I like this change because I also like Singed, though I don't actually play him that often. But he now has a... Uh, so they've changed his E to take away from the base damage and add it to, into a maximum health damage. Uh, deals maximum health damage as well as the base damage. And, mm. and uh, ability power scaling. This is nasty. Very nasty. So six between 6 and 8%, depending how it's ranked up, he deals max health damage. I mean, I think this changes his build, like his, his uh, yeah. you know, spell, substantially spell, penetration spell order. Now. Yeah, well, let's yeah. see. I mean, you probably even consider taking E almost first. Was that definitely yeah. second? Um, you know, really before there was no real reason to take E anything, but like to level it up last. Now he'd be like definitely second. Um, maybe Omega depending Higgs how tanky they are, maybe even first. Especially if you're good at throwing people into the mega adhesive because yep. it does have that snare behind it now and um you're not really benefit you're not really benefiting from slowing people when they're stunned or snared because mm. they're not moving anyway so um yeah, so having an extra slow on mega adhesive would be awesome but if you're snaring them in mega adhesive because you're really good at that and you've worked out how to do it uh mail me and tell me how yeah. uh, um then yeah, I can definitely see this being a second level up, and uh, Leandri's is already great on Singed. Yeah, but now um, it's amazing. Now it's because, yeah. even better. Yeah, like with the way mid game power spikes go when buying items, uh, Leand like or not Leandri's torment, the haunting guys uh, has always been really good for people who scale well with. Uh, spell penetration and mm. for, for those of you who aren't sure basically high base damage on your abilities you're better off building early spell penetration uh to really capitalize on the efficiency of your ability now percentile damage is based off the enemy's hp obviously that's the whole point but penetration like that al almost always means that you'll be doing more damage with spell penetration than you would be otherwise. So it discounts one of their defenses and destroys the other one. So it really does work really well. I'm not even sure I'm explaining that well enough for people to really understand how good that can be. Yeah. Uh, but Leandri's Torment doing percentile damage, Fleen doing percentile damage, as well as the ridiculousness of the poison and, and the fact that it stacks the with his... Yeah, the fact that it stacks well with his core item, which is the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Yep. Um, if you don't know about that item synergy, it's basically if someone is movement impaired, I slow, binding, stunned, etc., then they take additional damage, additional percentage damage from Leandra's Torment. Uh, and Rylai's Crystal Scepter applies a slow. The poison applies both and just and scales with this beautifully. So yeah. I, I and, think... And again, Righteous Glory, items. excellent on Singed, you know. Um, oh, yeah. yeah especially, like, especially for his passive, like yeah. more mm -hmm. HP for mana. Yeah. Yeah. 
Also, he's a tank, so he fits into this new meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, I mean, I think the main barrier to him tanks. coming back in a big way is Le um, Lissandra. You know, top lane Lissandra is just going to absolutely kick the crap out of Singed. Because it's <laughs> like, you run up to me, I, I snare you. You try to run up to you again, I slow you. You run up to me, I snare you. You know, like you just never catch her. Um, mm. Though, having said that, you could decide to take Flash instead of Ghost. Because I'd say most people would take Ghost. Um, so you could take Flash instead because you've got Righteous Glory. That kind of fulfills that role that Ghost would otherwise. So, you know, there's, there's an option there. But yeah, certainly gets Lissandra. He's going to get his ass handed to him uh, probably repeatedly. But yeah, Singe is fun. Um, it might work against her when in when we come later stages of the game just because he's... She's not really dealing any damage. Yeah. But I guess she's still, like, stopping him from She still does That's it, yeah. You know, in, in late game, it's like, you know, snare, slow, ult, snare, slow. You know, like, it's just you never get yeah. to him. I don't think you'd want to waste your ult on Singe, though, would you? I feel like you'd want to use it on someone a bit more high priority. D depends if he's running at your carry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, because it creates a slowing yeah. area around him as well, so it would stop the rest of the team from engaging as well. Mm -hmm. um, All right, well... Probably not the... Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... Sion? Yeah, we're like talking about Sion. Talking about Sion. Let's talk about Sion then. Uh, um, so, he the his Q damage deals ten percent less damage to monsters. Uh, so it's obviously only a thing for well, jungle Sion. It goes from ninety percent to eighty percent. Yeah, which is yeah. not a yeah. thing. But uh, the the big change is the is E the pass through uh, damage bonus uh, when he hits a minion or it hits a monster and it passes and hits something else is now gone from fifty percent to thirty percent. So it still applies as slow, but deals less damage. Made me cry when I saw that nerf. Made me cry. The thing I liked about Sion was that he was he's a he's a late game tank who's a lane bully. And I sort of liked that about his identity, that he was a really strong lane bully that become this gigantic late game tank, even if he wasn't dealing damage late game. I just never like it's not like think like Draven or Darius, like those Noxian sort of champions, like those ruthless warriors. Thematically, you don't want them being passive and trying to farm and like pussying out of fights at any point in the game. Thematically, that does not make any sense. So when I saw the roar of the Slayer nerfs, that said to me, "Oh, okay, so he's not going to be a he's not going to be a lame bully now. He's just going to shoot minions through minions and then clear waves and hide under his tower." But um, yeah, but I mean, it happens, was it was a heck of a lot of damage. I mean, it's. Even yeah, now, it still does a fair bit of damage. Like I've encountered a couple of sirens while it's playing pretty, nerf. It's pretty good. Things. But let me finish. Uh, a lot of scions have actually moved and joined the club of scions who were always maxing Q. Because yep. uh, Q has a lower mana cost than his E now because his E scales up with mana, which was already a pretty big nerf. His Q costs less. And um, the more you charge it, the more damage it does. You can use E to set it up or you can just whack him with your Q. You can do the wet shirt contest where Sion just goes <laughs> and looks like he's ripping off his shirt. <laughs> Um, no, the image so, it does actually look like that. So people have actually opted into maxing Q over Roar of the Slayer, from what I've noticed. Um, which, um, which, uh, which uh, I was scared of. I, I sort of wanted him to be a lame bully, but um, he's still a bit of a lame bully. He's still shooting minions through people, putting them in the air, dealing lots of damage, not taking a lot of damage because of his shield. And um, and now, rather than standing behind his minions, shooting min shooting his shooting minions at people from really far away, he's a bit more up close and personal. And so I think uh, I have nothing to cry about now because now it thematically even makes more sense because he's right up in their face. Like, <laughs> okay, um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I I don't think it's a, a huge thing. I mean, the. I guess you really sort of want to apply the slow and then uh, then do his Q. Like, that kind of seems to be the, the combination that you kind of want. That's what um, it's turned into. It used yeah. to be big damage nuke. Yeah. It's just from really far away. And I liked it because it made him a lame bully, but he's, I, I still think he's a pretty good lame bully, and I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's just healthier, a healthier way of going about things now. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, we're running out of time. But there's a Vega, there's Vega buffs. So Steve, do you want to talk about Vega buffs? Because yes, this is like your patch, man. This five point six is like everything you love. At least buffs. Steven, would you Carthus like to talk buffs, about at least Vega buffs? buffs. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Baleful Strike range has been increased by one hundred, and his mana regen based on his missing mana has been increased. 
So now he can queue more often, safer. Uh, it'll pass through the first minion, hit the caster minion a lot more. Like, just all these more awesome things. Big change on his E. Uh, if an enemy would dash through Event Horizon's wall, they'll stop at the wall rather than what's been happening previously, where they would jump through the wall, they would finish the animation of their dash, they'd land, and they would be stunned, which always looked really weird. I remember yeah. when Vigo was being picked up as a counter to Kha'Zix, uh, which is really weird. You think, like, you think Vigo, you think, okay, he does damage based on the enemy ability power, so he's an anti-mage. Like, but he was being picked against Kha'Zix because you just chuck the event horizon down in the path of his, uh, his Lead. jump, and it'd stop him dead wherever he would normally land, which is generally right in, like, <laughs> where he doesn't want to be. But... Uh, yeah, stopping them at the wall will make it a lot easier to just line up combos. If you see someone who's going to be dashing in, you can put the event horizon down and you know exactly where they're going to land because different dashes have different lengths mm, and stuff. Mm. So it makes Vigar a lot easier to anticipate with. Uh, yes. And it yeah, dark, I think he's just stronger uh, all around. Matter, yeah. For Dark Matter in particular, because that was the skill in his kit that was sort of out of whack a bit. When yeah, the, it didn't really fit when, with the new. Vibe when this, when the new, when the new stun yeah. happened, uh, now that they're always going to stop at that wall, put it where you want it. Send dark matter down while the wall's still, while the thing's still forming, and you can queue them and ult them, whatever. And more likely, you're going to be hitting your dark matter now, which is awesome. Finally. All right. Well, there's other things in here. Some of which we will talk about. Some of which we won't. But we've. I think come... Steve wants to talk about the chalice of harmony. Yeah, let's get into that next week, just because that's probably really a bigger discussion than the time we've got. Oh no, it's really simple. It's just it's OP. Okay, well, sure. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I guess so. Then there you <laughs> go. So, so discussion had. Let's tick that one off. Done. That's right. <laughs> um, what do you want to talk about then, Carrot? This amazing Yorick buff that's going to. Oh my gosh! I was actually going to make mention it, and I'm glad you mentioned because I'm st Yorick buffs always good. That that Q oh landing his Q is the worst and so just giving that little bit of a range buff amazing yeah. uh, um, for Elaine Yorick being able to max his Q is the best thing you can do a lot of the times he'd max E um, just because he couldn't gives get you in so range much more of sustained. Q yeah well yeah but the sustain doesn't change that much um, because it's mostly based off the damage your ghoul is doing and the damage your ghoul is doing is based off your stats not the yep. level of your ability. True. Yep. So being able to max Omen of War was always the best option for Yorick, but he could never do it because he could never get in range to, to whack him mm. because um, it's such a hard ability to hit. And now it's gotten that Mordekaiser treatment where it, Mordekaiser's Q now has longer range. So now mm. the Shovel Knight has more range. Cool stuff. Shovel Knight. Love it. All right. Well, um... Uh, we'll, we'll come back to I guess we'll definitely be coming back to this next week because uh, the, the five seven will definitely be out by then um, we'll try and get our way through it I mean we got the final of the OPL next week it's just one series of games so I guess we won't spend too much uh, talking about it and then we'll get into it and we'll get it done so yes tune in and of course Trinity Force podcast proper they do heaps of analysis on this stuff so make sure you check them out as well um, OPL final tomorrow. I'm actually going to post the audio to the diet that we record in sort of a crappier form and then update it later. So, uh, you know, make sure you check that, uh, if you want to hear better quality audio later on, I'll update it. Um, and I think that probably does it for this week. I can't think of it. Either. Oh, iTunes reviews, get your iTunes reviews in. Remember 30 reviews, $10 RP we might be going to you. We'll do a raffle. Um, so, and email us oslolpodcast at gmail.com when you've sent off your review. And of course, anybody who's done a review is already in the running. Cool. All right. My name's Cat Colossus. I've been joined by Stephen Vick, and we're going to be back again next week. Bye-bye. Uh, happy birthday, Diesel, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>